Hi there, it's Jennifer from ScribblingGrace.com. Today I have a Bible journal with me a video for you on creating a multimedia wave. So really we're just using watercolor and uh, some white acrylic. But uh, this is one of those pages that I feel like it's a really good one for beginners because it's not all that complicated. The shape is pretty simple. Um, and it's a fun use of <laughs> techniques. So um, to start off, I'm just applying a quick basic wash to my page. So a wash is basically where you just take the watercolor and, <laughs> uh, you know, paint it on your page. You can do a wet on wet type of thing here. I'm doing a dry on wet. So my page was dry. There's no uh, water already down on my page. And I just grabbed my watercolor and... Uh, painted it on my page and that's it for the background. So um, I also grabbed out three other blue colors from my Kiritake Gansai Tambi watercolor set, which is my favorite watercolor set because it has so many pre-mixed colors and the colors are really nice and vibrant and rich. And so um, I will put all the links to all the supplies that I'm using in the blog post that goes along with this video at scribblinggrace.com slash wave. Um, and you can find links to, you know, the watercolor set and all of that stuff. But if you don't have the Kiritake watercolor set, but you have some other watercolors, you can definitely mix a few different colors. Um, you also don't even really need to have all that many different colors of blues and greens. But I would suggest trying to have like maybe one blue and one green at least. And somewhat darker uh, blues and greens. If you can. So, um, I'm just taking my pencil now and sketching out the form of my wave. <laughs> Pretty straightforward, and I'm just going to try my best to stick to that form a little bit. And um, I also want to point out that I am using my illustrating Bible, which is this, uh, it's by Illustrated Faith and Dayspring, which is a pretty new Bible to come out, and it has the large four-inch margins, which is unique to any other journaling Bible. It's also a square shape, um, and I, I do have a full review on this Bible <laughs> and when I first got it. I will say, though, that this is not my all-time favorite journaling Bible. And I thought I would love it a lot more than I actually do, mainly because watercolors, which is one of my main mediums I love to work with, reacts really interestingly on the page. I think that the paper used in this Bible is a little bit more fibrous, so the watercolors seep into it a little bit more than my, any of my other journaling Bibles. And I have a lot of other different kinds of journaling Bibles. So um, this one is the only one that has ever given me any bleed through with watercolors. And so for this page, I knew that because I'm using a lot of water and a lot of paint that I'll probably get some bleed through. But I just do not like to prep my page with gesso, <laughs> mainly because I don't like the way that watercolors react on top of it, but that's just a personal preference. But I also just am too lazy and I don't like to take the extra time to prep my page. So um, I decided that even if I got some bleed through, I wasn't going to worry about it and I'll just uh, do my best to cover it up once I work on that back side of this page. And um, turns out that I didn't get all that much bleed through, but I did get a very small amount of bleed through. And I'll show you the back side of this page later on. So the key to this page that I'm doing is really just working in layers. So if you're paying attention, you saw that I just added, um, I just took a big round brush. It doesn't really matter the size, um, but I just took a nice big round brush and just added watercolor in different areas to my wave here. So I, I start with uh, my lighter blue and then I like to go from lighter to dark. So I started with my lightest blue even though it's still a pretty dark colored blue and uh, dabbed it into my wave and then I dabbed in the blue green color that I'm using and this other dark navy color and uh, then I let that dry and then I'm going ahead and now I'm adding my second layer. So Adding the multiple layers just helps to give more dimension to my wave and fill in any lighter spots um, and it just makes it look really pretty. So <laughs> um, working in layers is always a great technique to use when you're working with watercolors. And so again, I just did, I believe, just the two layers 
here for this wave. Um, and I used my craft heat gun to dry the wave really quickly. That way I don't have to sit around and wait for each layer to dry. Um, you could also technically use a hair dryer, but I prefer the heat gun because you don't have to worry about any of the watercolor moving around anywhere because there doesn't apply as much pressure or air as like a hair dryer would. And it gets really hot, so it dries it really fast. Um, so I'm also just taking a paper towel and blotting some of that watercolor away from where it covers up the text. For the most part, anytime I'm using watercolor, I can always uh, see the text through the page, but I know a lot of people do not like to go over that water, the text at all, so if you don't have this Bible, you uh, could definitely scale this down. You don't have to go all as over the text at all if you don't want to. I encourage you to do what you're comfortable with and have fun with it. So now it comes the fun part where I'm using the white acrylic paint. So I'm just using a Liquitex white acrylic paint, but you could use any white acrylic paint that you have. And you get a finger paint. I love finger painting. <laughs> um, so I'm just taking my finger and I'm just uh, dabbing the white paint all over the top of that wave. And um, it's actually a pretty nice thick amount. And this way I'm able to shape the wave into the shape that I want it to look. So it looks a little more normal. Um, before you add the white, it looks a little funky, I think. But once you add the white, it looks more like an actual wave. And I'm also adding a little bit of white down at the bottom and throughout the wave in just small amounts. That way it looks like, you know, there's the bubbles that are all throughout the ocean. So when you're looking at a wave, you know, usually you can see some other um, bubbles and stuff like that as it, the wave is forming. But of course, the bulk of those bubbles that you're going to see are <laughs> at the top of the wave. So, um... This is what I call a roaring wave. <laughs> so it's really nice and big and uh, has a lot of the foam, I guess, <laughs> the sea foam. So this really is a pretty simple process. So really, um, you are just going to take a pencil and draw out some type of wave shape and then just fill it in with your watercolors. And I like, I prefer to do multiple layers, but you can do whatever you want to do. Um, I used four different blue and one blue green color but you can use any type of color that you want any watercolors that you have on hand um, it's really I always want to say that um, I'm just showing you for an example to inspire you to create your own thing so I would encourage you to do that um, and then once you have your watercolor down you'll just go ahead with that white acrylic and just blot it on with your finger and it creates this really pretty wave so now that I have my wave done I'm just gonna go ahead and add lettering to finish off my page and focus on the verse that I'm working on. So I highlighted the verse with my Micron uh, pen and now I'm going to use my Tombow Funosuke to do some hand lettering. So I am working on Isaiah 43 verse 1 through 3 which says, Now this is what the Lord says, the one who created you, Jacob, and the one who formed you, Israel. Do not fear for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. I will be with you when you pass through the waters, and when you pass through the rivers, they will not overwhelm you. You will not be scorched when you walk through the fire, and the flame will not burn you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, and your Savior. And I think that that's such a beautiful portion of the scripture. So I um, decided to write out, when you pass through the waters, I will be with you on the top part of my wave. And then on the side, I wrote out, do not fear. I have called you by name. You are mine. And so I'm using my Tombow Funusuke brush pen, which is the brush pen I use in almost all of my videos if you've been following my channel at all. Um, and I have a tutorial on how to do this brush lettering as well. So I have quite a few lettering tutorials actually. Um, and I will put all of those links in this blog post that goes along with this video, scribblinggrace.com slash wave, and I'll put that link in the description below as well. And you'll find all of the supplies that I used again, and you'll find uh, any other helpful blog posts that I have that I think will help to create this page. <laughs> 
I also will put a link to this Bible that I'm using, the Illustrating Bible, which is sold by Illustrate or Dayspring um, and most Christian bookstores, I believe. However, I'm pretty sure that they're completely sold out at the moment from pretty much any store, but they should be getting more in February. So um, just keep that in mind if you're interested in getting this Bible. Though I don't particularly love it for watercolors. I think that overall it has a lot of really great features and it is a really um, great journaling Bible. This is also the CSB version, I believe. So that's something to keep in mind as well. Um, anyways, <laughs> that's about it for my page. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. And I just want to um, quickly just remind you to remember that it's not all about creating the art. I think that I fall into this trap quite often myself where I get a little too focused on the art aspect that I forget about my whole purpose of Bible journaling, which is to spend time in the Word and worship God and uh, just dig in deeper into the Bible. So I would encourage you to do the same. I'm going to go ahead and show you the backside um, again, I got very little bleed through, but there is definitely some bleed through and most of the time I will see some, sh uh, shadowing where you can see, um, you know, a shadow of the paint on the other side, but this time I did get, you can see a couple little dots where there was some actual bleed through, but that's it. So, um, all right. I hope you have a wonderful day. God bless.